Hi, I'm Hazel, and this is a complete guide to the Dead Mines Pet Battle Dungeon coming in 725. This is a new challenge in the style of the Wailing Caverns Pet Dungeon, with some minor improvements and cool new rewards. In order to do the Dead Mines Pet Dungeon, you'll need to have completed the Wailing Critters quest by doing the Wailing Cavern scenario at least once. You don't need to do the challenge run to unlock the Dead Mines, just the first time through where you're allowed to heal your pets. Once you've done that, you'll be able to pick up the Dead Mines Strikes Back quest and head out there. Marcus Brown says he'll hook you up with a minecart to get in, but really he just cues you for the scenario. Okay, so in Dead Mines we start off with a boss battle right off the bat. The Junk Reaper 500 is a mechanical boss with about 280 speed, and he is hard countered by elemental pets with elemental damage. So I'm using the Fell Flame here. The Fell Flame will solo him, we're using Burn, Scorched Earth, and Conflagrate. You want to start with Scorched Earth, you want to follow that up with Conflagrate, and then just spam Burn while using the other two on cooldown, and you're gonna more or less wipe him out. Uh, you'll notice that Junk Reaper doesn't have any backline pets. The bosses in this dungeon do not have backline, they might add that later. Uh, the bosses in the Wailing Caverns had backline, but maybe they've just decided that it's better off to not have trash behind the boss. Either way, a Fell Flame takes care of this real quick. You could use pretty much any elemental pet with elemental damage you like. There's a whole whack of them to choose from, so just pick your favorite and burn your way to victory. So he does come back because he is mechanical, but we have lots of life here. Um, the one thing to keep note of though is Junk Reaper does cleave. So if you're doing the challenge version of this, make sure that you don't care about the pets in your backline because they are going to take some damage. After the Junk Reaper, we're going to be fighting our first trash pet of the instance, the Unfortunate Defiance. This is an undead skull pet. Uh, he's a one-off encounter, and I'm going to be countering him with a blind rat. And you could also use a frost for a rat. He's got the same move set. So we start off with Crouch, follow that up with Call Darkness like we just did there, and then spam Sneak Attack. Uh, this is really good for a couple of reasons. Firstly, uh, Sneak Attack is critter damage, so it is super effective against this poor little skull. Secondly, Sneak Attack does even more damage when the target is blinded, which Call Darkness does, so we're getting a nice combo off there. And thirdly, the Unfortunate Defiance really likes to Siphon Life, and Siphon Life is going to have its healing cut in half by the Darkness Weather, so the Blind Rat or Frostful Rat is going to be able to chew really easily through this and then take out at least some of the backline pets. Even if you are getting some bad hit luck from the whole Darkness thing, he's got the same RNG, so you're going to be just fine. Uh, you could alternately deal with this with another Call Darkness pet, like a Crow or a Raven, and do the whole Call Darkness Predator, or Call Darkness Nocturnal Strike thing, or you could get by with most critter damage pets, but the Blind Rat, Frost for Rat works really well. Unfortunate Defias gets to come back up there because of his undead racial, then he goes away, and then we just have backline pets to clean up. So this is exactly like it was in the Wailing Caverns, you just want to use pretty much whatever you have available in the backline to deal with these. If you really want to counter type stuff, you can bring some extra flyers and beast damage and then magic damage to counter the typical backline pets you'll find. But they're only like white quality, so it's not gonna be a really big deal. You can chew through them with pretty much whatever. And then moves don't super matter. They, they can matter a little bit, but this is the point where you can, you know, flick over to the other monitor, pull out your phone, chat with your friends. It's not super intense focus is no longer needed. So the last one here is the Dead Mind's Rat. These rats like to do multi-hit attacks. So if you are picking pets to counter backlines, anything with like, Stone Skin, Anubisath Idol, for example, is very good. He's going to be immune to most of their attacks because they're going to flurry, they're going to stampede, and you're just going to laugh it off like nothing happened. So here we're actually going to throw down a Sandstorm. And of course, you take weak damage from them too. So Anubisath Idol super hard counters these rats. You're going to find a couple of them throughout the instance. So Sandstorm means that he is just stampeding in vain, and you can pretty much just crush him to death. For the second trash pet of the second phase, we fight the Angry Geode. This is an elemental pet, so you pretty much just want to bring your best water damage. Doesn't really matter what it is. Just look in your collection, find something with some water moves, and just whip it out. So I've chosen to use the Jade Mist Dancer. He is really good here. Our moves are Steam Vent, Rain Dance, and Acid Rain. I start with Acid Rain to get that rolling, and then I follow it up with a Steam Vent, just waiting for me to take damage so I'm not Rain Dancing on a full health bar. And then I rain dance and just start spamming Steam Vent. So Steam Vent, you know, you get the crits from the rain dance buff, you get the extra damage from the cleansing rain buff. He takes extra damage because he's elemental and it just, it all works out. So he's almost down. That was so close. It's gonna take just one more and then it's time to chew through the backline pets, which goes pretty quickly if you can get some lucky crits. So I'm just gonna keep spamming Steam Vent. Um, for these backline pets, you can pretty much clean them up as you see fit. Obviously you brought some pets of your own in the backline, doesn't really matter what they are. Um, but you're, it doesn't really matter what you do, so I'm gonna kind of blow right past this because you know what to do. Just do damage moves. Just pick any. Close your eyes and stab your finger on the keyboard. They will die, I promise. So for stage three, we are going to fight a mining monkey. Uh, he is a rare quality beast monkey pet, and you want to bring a mech pet. I've chosen to bring my Draenei Micro Defender with Metal Fist, Reflective Shield, and Ion Cannon uh, because I just had that handy from Son of Scum still. 
but you can do really well with any mech pet that has decoy. So your Zeppelin would be really good, you know, Mechanical Frostbore. Uh, this guy does lots of damage through barrel tosses, so he takes a long time to wind it up, which means you get lots of mileage out of decoy. Um, if you're going to use Reflective Shield, you want to wait a few turns before you actually use it. I used it a little bit too early because he spends so long setting up his stuff with going bonkers and actually making the barrel that you don't want to be reflecting damage when he's not giving you any, so... Just reflect shield when it's appropriate, spam Metal Fist otherwise, and then blow Ion Cannon as soon as you know that you can kill him with the half damage reduction. Do not forget about the 50% damage reduction. And then of course, once you've gone through that, you've got a couple backline pets to clean up, but that is no big deal for you. You're still in your first pet. You have so much gas in the tank that you can just go all the way. So for stage four, we fight the O-Front boss, Captain Klutz. And I would say this is the toughest fight in this whole instance. I'm going to be using a Bone Serpent with Bone Barrage, Call Darkness, and Liftoff. Use Liftoff first, by the way. And then also a Ghastly Kid with Diseased Bite, Ethereal, and then Ghostly Bite. So bring the Bone Serpent in first. You want to lift off, and then you want to Call Darkness, and then Bone Barrage. And then we're going to swap it out. So Captain Klutz heals himself a lot with Giant's Blood, and he loves to stun you with Clobber. So we're trying to avoid as much clobber as possible. Now for this fight, you really want to be tracking his cooldowns. I'm using the pet tracker add-on to do so. So after you've gone three, two, one on the serpent, you want to bring out your ghastly kid. You want to ghostly bite um, either once or twice. And then once clobber comes off cooldown, if clobber is off cooldown and giant's blood is not, then you want to use ethereal. If giant's blood is off cooldown, then you want to use disease bite and wait around because he will heal before he stuns you if both are available. Um, it really depends on how much damage your Bone Barrage did, but basically just watch the cooldown. If Clobber is up and go and heal is not, then use Ethereal and then you will avoid the stun. Um, if that comes back up and you don't have Ethereal, you can also Ghostly Bite. Um, and you can, if you Ghostly Bite any time in the turn or two preceding the stun, then you're going to be immune to stuns because you stunned yourself and at least you got a lot of damage out of it. So aside from that, you just want to spam Diseased Bite. Um, once you come back in your immunity round, that's a good time to use Ghostly Bite. You're going to get a lot of damage in, and then you should have enough room for any of your other pets to finish this off. And at this time, there are no, there are no backline pets to worry about, so as soon as you finish the boss, you are good. So we're just going to go ahead with a Bone Barrage here. Finish off the fight. I hope that made sense. So in Stage 5, we have three more trash pets to fight. The first one is a Battle Rat. Uh, it's got a little hat on him, and I'm going to be using my Xandalaria Ankle Render. You could also use a Knee Biter, or really your favorite beast damage. Doesn't really matter if you whip out the Ankle Render or Knee Biter, you just want to go Black Claw, and then Hunting Party, and then just watch his health melt away. You should have plenty of um, juice left in the tank to deal with some backline pets. And then of course you brought some backline pets yourself to help clean that up. But the rat does not know what to do with an Ankle Render. He goes down pretty easily. So I'm just going to spam Leap here and then finish off the fight with whatever moves I please. After the battle rat, we're going to fight a battle monkey. This is a beast pet, so you just bring any mechanical you happen to have. However, if you have an Alarma bot leveled up, he absolutely shreds this fight. So use um, Interrupting Jolt first and then a cooldown. Follow that up with Decoy and then use that on cooldown and then you want to spam Batter. So we have a speed advantage here, which means that A, Interrupting Jolt is going to be interrupting him, which just ruins his life. And B, Batter is going to be getting that extra hit, so it doesn't really matter what you're doing, what he's doing here. Uh, he's not going to punch through your decoy, and you are just absolutely shredding him. We still have full health at this point when he has only 218. And Interrupting Jolt is back up, and he just does not know what to do with this. The poor monkey has a pirate hat too, which is really cute, but unfortunately for him, he is just super duper dead. And then you can do whatever it is that you like to do to clean up the backline and move on to the third trash pet. The second to last encounter in this dungeon is Klutz's Battle Bird. Uh, this is a parry in the style of the Green Wing Macaw, also with a little hat. Uh, Green Wing Macaw is one of my favorite pets, so I just love this fight. Um, he is a flying pet, so he is of course countered by the Nexus Whelpling. You could also whip out a Stormborn Whelpling or whatever your favorite magic damage is. But if you bring that Nexus Whelpling and then you go Arcane Storm and then Mana Surge, you don't even have to touch your keyboard and he's going to get you halfway through this fight, including the first pet and most of the second one, the Nexus Whelpling just knows no bounds. Oh, that's pretty much just gonna take care of that. So after another encounter with the shadowy figure, which I will let you watch for yourself, uh, it's time to fight the final boss of the instance, Cookie's Leftovers. Uh, Cookie's Leftovers is a magic pet, and like all good magic pets, Cookie's Leftovers is hard countered by a mechanical pandar and dragonling, and can be pretty much soloed with one. So with a mechanical pandar and dragonling, like usual, you want to go ahead and decoy. He's gonna put you to sleep, um, but it's fine, you just decoy when you wake up and then spam Breath, and then occasionally Decoy. Uh, there's only one pet here, so you can use Thunderbolt if you want, but because Breath is strong damage, it's usually gonna roll higher. Uh, Cookies does take less damage because he is a boss pet, 
but it doesn't matter. He's gonna take his sweet time chewing through your decoy, especially because his moves go on cooldown so that you actually get double turns. Uh, there are turns where he can't even do anything, so he's just giving you turns for your decoy to come back up, and you're just gonna mow through him with breath. Eventually, he's gonna get you down, but you're, you come back as your mech pet, and if you're really worried about it, you can bring a second Dragonkin pen in your back line. You can see I've got my Emerald Proto Whelp just waiting in the wings there, just in case we need like a nice Proto Strike to finish this off. But honestly, Mechanical Pandar and Dragonling has pretty much got this covered. Of course, Breath is an RNG damage move. You can get really low rolls and do less damage than I'm doing here, but you would have to be really unlucky to not finish this fight because of that, especially if you brought a backup pet. Uh, you've got two other pets that are just sitting in the background spectating, so there we go. So close, so close to just finishing that off, but the decoy is still up, and there we go. Like with the Wailing Caverns, after your first run, you can repeat it once a week for some special goodies. Your weekly Deadmines challenge will give you a bottle cap, which you can save up to trade with Marcus for three new pets. It'll take you six weeks to get all three, and then you can get a bag with pet charms and supplies if you'd like to continue after that. One bottle cap gets you a Pet Reaper 50, who's a little mech with the Faux Reaper model. Two caps gives you Tricorn, who is a rat with a hat. Last, three caps will get you a pocket cannon with a variety of cannon shot moves, extra plating, and explode. These pets are not cageable, so you'll need to actually do the dungeon if you want them. This dungeon is pretty easy to the point that you should be able to complete it with almost any pets as long as you have enough. If you're looking for extra pets to counter the backline, focus on getting beast damage, flying damage, and magic damage. You should have plenty of the second two left over from the Wailing Caverns. So that's the Deadmines Pet Dungeon. I think it's much better paced and more fun than the Wailing Caverns, and I love that the new pets are currency based rather than RNG. Thanks for watching! Let me know what you think, and have a wonderful, wonderful day. Bye!